Grand Rising or good evening everybody, this is Goddess Kendra. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell. So this evening I was able, or I should say, blessed to go to the movies. Lately I've just been working, working, working and getting no sleep and I feel we, the people who work so hard, should have the right to have fun every once in a while. Because all work and no play will drain you out faster. And I realize soon my time is going to even be more complicated with work. So I might as well have fun when I can. So today I'm doing a movie review about a movie called Malignant. It came out in 2021. It's one hour and 51 minutes. It, it is considered a thriller and a horror movie. Hold on, I took my notes. Jeez. Ugh. So the actors in this movie are um, Annabelle Wallace, played Emily May, slash Madison Lake. Then you have Ingris Bisu, playing Winnie. Then you have Makina Grace, who plays Madison as a young child. Then you have um, Mariana Mazeppa, who plays Gabriel. Then you have Maddie Hansen, who plays Sydney Lake. And then you have Jake Abel, who plays Derek Mitch. And the summary goes as, Paralyzed by fear from shocking visions, a woman's torment worsens as she discovers her waking dreams are terrifying realities. So remember, this is going to be a spoiler alert. I warned you so you can't get an attitude with me and get all pissy. So the movie starts off with uh, doctors at this research facility called Simon Research Hospital. And all you, for it first starts off with a doctor saying, hi, my name is Dr. I can't remember her name. This is 1993, and then all of a sudden you hear people screaming in the background, and all you see is chaotic. They said Gabriel got out again. He was in the um, records room today. So she's like, we got to stop him. All you see are like people getting ripped apart, stabbed, bitten, people flying back and forth. And then... Um, people dying. And so then finally, everybody at this hospital literally passes away except the main research doctor. She was able to shoot Gabriel with a tranquilizer. And then all you see is from the side is like, what? So at these research facilities, they're researching aliens or something? What in the world's going on? So then it goes from 1993 to present day, exactly 30 years later. A woman named Madison gets home from work. And then her husband is sitting down on the bed um, watching TV and being on his phone. And she was like, I'm really in pain. I can't have aspirin. And then all of a sudden, she turns the TV off. She's like, I really need to get rest. And then he starts getting just added to, why are you working? Well, clearly, your bum ASS ain't over here trying to work. And what man could see his pregnant wife working and not try to contribute? Because, you know, your job gives you at least six weeks off after you give birth, after a year, well, at least in my state. So he's like, I was watching this. She's like, I really need sleep. And then he's pointing in her face and just being really abusive. You could tell that he be beating her booty cheeks. And like I say, domestic violence is not okay. If you are in an abusive relationship, there is help. And at the end of the day, it could end up that one or both of you guys are locked up and the state's going to take your children away. Or you guys are going to end up killing each other. So she's like, you know what, I don't um, want you 
to do this again. He's like, well, what do you mean? And he, she's like six months pregnant, pushes her so hard to the um, wall that it pushes, breaks the wall a little bit. And her head print is in the wall and the back of her head is bleeding. What a piece of shit. So then obviously she puts him out of the room and then um, what happened? Um, he's asleep on the couch and all of a sudden he sees like he thinks he sees Madison. So he goes to the kitchen, the figure disappears, then all of a sudden, the door opens to the refrigerator, and then the TV comes on. So then at this point, if I know, my goodness, my wife is asleep, I didn't do any of this, this house has to be haunted, or there is some very bad energy in here. So then finally he's like, uh... And then Madison goes downstairs because she hears a noise. And all of a sudden, she finds her husband's neck turned around and his bone sticking up. That's what that abusive jackass gets. Yes, you heard me say it. This is what this abusive jackass gets. I feel, I don't feel bad for people who are abusive. Whatever karma you give yourself is what the hell you deserve. So then all of a sudden she sees the dark figure and, um, oh, before she's, I'm sorry, before she sees the dark figure, she freaking, um, looks out the window or whatever and then runs upstairs. And right when she runs upstairs, literally that spirit kicks the door down and freaking knocks her like 10 feet back. I'm like, there's no way that a infant inside the body could take that much of a pounding like that and survive. So then the neighbors call the police and she ends up in the hospital and her sister shows up. And she's like, where's the baby? Um, Maddie's like, where's the baby? Where's the baby? Where's Derek or whatever? And her sister's like, um, Derek died and the baby did survive. So then she comes home. Her sister's like, you know, I could take some time off. She's a struggling actress and stay with you. So one day she looks out the window and sees a dark figure again. She uh, locks the doors and she's frightened. So, at that point, she, the next day, ends up changing the locks and her sister comes over. And the key doesn't work, so she climbs in the window and scares the crap out of her because she sees this image. And her sister's like, well, you changed the locks. So, how was I supposed to get in? And she's like, you know... Sis, I'm terrified of what happened. And her sister's like, F that. Derek was an a-hole and that's what he gets. You deserve better. Nobody deserves to be treated bad, badly like that. So then it shoots to a scene where they shoot the underground part of, I was going to say San Francisco, Seattle, Washington. There was a terrible earthquake and basically... A lot of the city is underground and they decided to build over it. The lady does a tour and then ends up um, letting the people go. Like, it's hurt, it's to be haunted. And then as she's closing up, she hears some really funny noises as she's closing up. And I'm like, please do not walk into this dark. You have to be super freaking crazy to do that. So she turns the light back on and this image um, figure takes this woman and ties her up. So I'm thinking, whatever this figure is, 
that's haunting Madison is hunting this woman. They have something in common. How do they know each other? I don't know. So then the cops are like, well, what happened? And then it comes to find out Madison's husband was abusing her. I'm trying to think. I want to tell this story in order. So then the figure goes to that doctor who was running that facility and ends up stabbing her with her award and takes off the news. Dr. Such and Such was brutally murdered. So then I guess I'm assuming it has to be her ex-husband's like, oh my gosh, she was murdered or whatever the case may be. This is horrible. I, don't, I know I don't talk to her. It's been years, but all she did is try to help people. So then he's on the phone and all of a sudden... The goddamn windows open and there's wet footprints. There is no goddamn way. My kids, dumbass. I'm going to go and clean up the mess. Who does that? I'd be like a 911. What the hell? So then he goes into the closet and cleans it up and goes to bed. And that dark figure ends up like smashing his face in. Like it's really bad. So, Madison ends up going to her mother's house and was like, when I was born, did I have like a twin brother or something? Is there something wrong with me? Then they show her a home video of her at the age of nine. She was born in 85. Oh, two years older than I am. Anywho, goes and shows her a video of her... Wanting a birthday party. And she's like, well, no one at school likes me because I was a freak. And then all of a sudden, she goes, Gabriel, don't say that. And her parents are like, who who are you talking to? She's like, Gabriel. They're like, oh, you're an imaginary friend. So, finally, her and her sister talk to the detective and goes, hey, I feel like there's somebody's in danger. Every time something happens, I get a vision. So she says the name of a spot of an apartment and what's facing across the street. And guess what it is? A freaking dead body that Gabriel killed. So they're like, how do you know this? She's like, I can't explain it. I have visions and like, I don't expect you to understand. So then the detective starts looking at these cases and one from 93 and goes, can you age this photo 30 years? So she, he goes, didn't you get, the, isn't that why you interviewed that girl? She just left. So as they're doing their thing, on the list is a doctor who worked at the facility. The cop is looking at the photos. He ends up going to the doctor's house. And then what do you know? So what he does to Madison is he puts her in a state of being paralyzed and then she is very terrified. So the cop goes there, the doctor's dead, and then she's like, Gabriel's still here. So then this idiotic cop decides he wants to follow Gabriel. Why would you follow something that could flip down three flights of stairs or a three-story building and run. Follows him. Gabriel almost kills him. So as they're figuring all this out, guess what happens? Freaking the woman that was kidnapped in the beginning fall through Madison's freaking roof. Immediately she's arrested and she's like, my sister... Her sister was like, my sister has nothing to do with what's going on right now. Trust me, she had nothing to do with this. So the lady falls through the roof and guess what happened? She goes, I didn't kill. I didn't kidnap and I didn't kill. You have to believe me. She goes, you have to fucking believe me. I'm telling the fucking truth. Then all of a sudden, all the lights in the interrogation room freaking um, burst and they're in the dark. And guess who calls? Gabriel goes, I detective, you want to say I'm part of Madison's imagination, but I'm not. You can't get rid of me like that. I'm like, damn. So Madison ends up waiting in jail, minding her business, and then the girls 
My women in there started messing with her. And they jump her. At this point, she starts seizing up. And guess who starts to manifest? Gabriel. Gabriel goes in that mug and rips people's heads off, rips people's hearts out, bloody bludgeon them, kills the cops, kill the cops sitting in the precinct and everything. So then her sister goes back to her mother's house and come to find out Madison's mother gave her to the facility when her mother was pregnant. Her mother said, you're an abomination, which is messed up because even her mother probably wasn't married to her father. So how the heck you going to damn somebody? I, I hate when people do stuff like that. A person will tell me you a hoe and all kind of mean shit. When you have multiple baby daddies, more than two, and then none of your siblings have the same last names. I'm just motherfucking saying I tell the truth. If you're mad, I don't care. So her sister goes back and looks at old videos. And guess what? Her mother gave up her daughter and then she ended up in the facility. Do you remember when Her in the movie Harry Potter when that guy had two faces? Her mother had a twin connected to her and feeds off her energy. It looks like a super ugly freaking alien thing. And, gave, and, and that entity attached that demonic, they call it, um, I forget, it's something. It's like when you're born, your twin doesn't fully develop for whatever the case may be. So then it's attached to her. They put him asleep and he's going crazy. The the um, mother's in the facility and then Gabriel just is really aggressive. And she's like, well, you're going to feel tired because we sedated Gabriel or whatever the case may be. So you may be feeling the energy. And it literally, they ended up doing a surgery to remove that demonic twin attached to the mother. But they couldn't get rid of it fully or it would kill her. They cut her head open and stuff. So that was evil, which she passed it on to her daughter. So her daughter had a twin. And then guess what? The reason why Gabriel got into full pledge or the twin per se, I fuck saying the twin as some demonic possession. Her mother, her grandmother put that stipulation on her mother and her mother passed it on to the, to Madison. So when her husband, Madison's husband pushed her into the wall, it gave that demon power over her. So then, um, the cops still didn't believe her in everything. And she was like, you've seen Gabriel, at this point, and then finally, um, Gabriel tries to kill her sister. Her sister goes, Madison, I know you're in there. You have to fight, fight this. So Madison goes... And when she gets to the hospital, when Mad and Madison and Gabriel get to the hospital, her biological mother was like, Gabriel, I'm so sorry. I should have never gotten rid of you. And he was trying to kill her. So then her sister was like, can you please fight this? So she's like, you're not going to take a hold of me anymore. You are going to be stuck. So she put that portion of evil out of her mind. So getting from this film... You could manifest anything that you ever want in this world. No matter if stuff is ugly or not, you can manifest anything you want in this world. And it doesn't matter. She allowed her evil or her lower self, I'll call it devil. I'm going to call it demonic self to take over her. And right when her and her sister got things back right, um... Her biological mother dies. So now I'm going to read a summary of the movie because I feel like I could have left things out and I like to give a thorough explanation. 
This story contains spoilers for Malignant. Every once in a while, a genre film comes along that is so off the wall, so against the grain of corrupt pop culture, and so wholly the works of the filmmaker, eyed and formative instruction that is difficult to believe any major studio could give it to Greenlight. I'm talking about films like Southland Tales 2006, Grindhouse 2007, Jennifer's Body 2009, Jupiter Ascending 2015, A Cure for Wellness 2016, and Mother 2017. It's not that any of these films share Kamalis besides their rather dismal box office receipts, Paul Rising audience response is that you can watch them and feel like you're getting a piece of the filmmaker's unfiltered consciousness for better or for worse. These are movies that are uniquely and completely made for the enjoyment of the creator and is for the rest of us happen to catch on well. Good for you. James Wan's latest malignant feels cut from the cloth from those features. Disdain to be a neo-cult classic. If you haven't seen Malignant yet, you should start reading this immediately and go watch it. And then watch it again to be certain you saw what you just saw. The film conceived by James Wan and Ingrid Bezu, B-I-S-U, and written by Akil Cooper, which she's an actor in the movie, Ingress. Begins simply enough with a step akin to so many supernatural horror, fi- horror films. The, there's Juan's camera trickery and Joseph Bishara's score cluing an audience in that that is indeed a James Wan film. But it intentionally seems awfully unabinitious as the trailer suggests for the film maker who not only emerges as one of those modern masters of horror, which saw 2004, Indigenous 2010, Indigenous Chapter 2 2013, The Conjuring 2013, and The Conjuring 2006, but also delivered $2 billion blockbuster with Furious 7 in 2015, and Aquaman in 2018, One, regardless of whether he's working with a budget of $200 million or $1.5 million, has never lacked for ambition. If the setup with a young woman, Madison Mitchell, Annabelle Wallace, is terminated by figure named Gabriel with ties to her childhood, seem too easy for someone of Juan's cavalier. That's best it is. The third act, Discovered by Madison's sister, Sydney, Madison Hassan, that Gabriel is not a supernatural figure or Madison's imaginary friend given form, but a paralytic twin that physicians cut down to size and bury in Madison's skull as a child is absolutely insanity. Coupled with the, felt, coupled with the fact that Gabriel's brain waves can manipulate electricity and cause Madison to hallucinate. There's some real next level shit going on here. And if that weren't enough, Gabriel emerged from the back of Madison's skull and using her body through backwards movement to slaughter the inhabitant of a whole precinct. It's certainly enough to bring bring the house down. I don't know if I've gained as much watch as horror movies since Orphan 2009 or Evil Dead 2013. It is impulsively mixed with unpredicted twists. Even if you guessed some of it, you didn't guess at all. And a fair share of camps that make malignant stand out. It's all absurd and much of it is intentionally funny. Though the fact that you're supposed to be laughing may not be entirely evident until the act. Upon rewatch, it became even more clear what malignant is doing. From the overbearing music cues, the editing choices, the soap opera, relevant Sydney, I'm adopted, the parking job on the edge of the cliff, 
and that every actor's commitment to playing their character as long as possible, but completely serious. Malignant is a master class example of controlling tone in order to display the audience and play with the suburb, the conventions that the past decades of mainstream horror have taught us how to respond to. In many ways, Malignant feels like a com a compassionate piece to Juan's Dead Silent in 2007. His only other horror film to get this kind of paralyzed response, though the filmmakers, through the filmmakers' skills, have grown significant since Dead Silent. It's too ter terrific in camp and the horrid tone of enthusiastic of past. Juan has referred to Malignant as his take on a giallo film, thrill horror films that were popular in Italy in the 60s and 70s. Filmmakers like Mario Bavo, Lucio Felucci, Ser Sergio Martino, and Dario Argento became sim synonymous with the subgene before making their hall of full fledged horror films through though for many the giallo elements were always present gialli are typically defined as female protagonists who witness a gruesome murder and are thrown into the world of paranoia confusion and hallucination as they became central to solving the mystery the killer it, the killer in these films is typically a shut up figure with black gloves gialli Gialli served as a precursor to the slasher from leading to an overly between many of them. Juan is, Juan is definitely playing in that area with the perpetual confusion and distract Madison in the black gloves and golden blade weaved Gabriel. But Juan has never been a filmmaker to stick entirely to one subgene. Malignant works as a symptomatic evolution of popular gene films. Juan's first tip his hat to the gothic supernatural film of Hammer Horror of the 1950s with Madison's isolation, a possibly large house for her means, heavily used of fog and shadow, and a domestic situation gone bad. When Madison's husband, Derek Jake Abel, is brutally murdered, the film shifts into Jaleo territory complete with cops Kiko Shaw, George Young, and Regina Moss, Michelle, Brianna White, who are way out of their depth and actually don't solve anything. From there, as Gabriel begins hunting down the doctors connected to Madison's past, the film enters a more traditional slasher territory through the question of whether Gabriel is or isn't supernatural Intently lingering, arguably highlighting the transition between slasher icon Michael Myers and Freddy Krueger in the 1980s. Man or myth, Juan juggles these horror illusions while throwing a few more balls into the mix as Malignant heads towards its final act. The sibling psychodramatic horror of Brianna D. Palm's sister, 1982 and the observed seedy witness of Frank Hillotter's basket case, 1972. And before all is said and done, Malignant takes one last turn into the horror tinge of super movies of the 1990s, like Sam Romney's Dark Man in 1980 and Alex Prayo's The Cow, The Crow. Even Madison's name, Madison Michelle, reflects and alteration of superhero secret identities. Her discovery of her own power in the end not only sets up an interesting avenue for a sequel, but also bridges the gap between horror and superhero films. Excuse me. The very thing that Juan has done repeatedly through his career. Malignant is a crucopo of B-movie influencers. Something screenwriter Cooper attests on Twitter writer. I grew up loving B grade horror films, still do. So it thrills me to know in the horror fans enjoy the movie. 
If it's gonna become a cult classic, then I have done my job. What Juan, Basu, and Cooper have created with Malignant isn't simply a list refer... What the hell? I'm sorry. Referral of winks and nods. It's a film with its own unique identity. Horror fans may be able to pick up on certain influences, but even after all that, the film remains a distinct original work that doesn't feel like it exists simply because the creator reflects on what it is in horror right now. We're living in a high point of horror movies. Anyone who says otherwise is either too tethered to their own Nostagala or hasn't really been exploring all the recent films that jeans have offered. But it's also true that when it comes to mainstream horror, the gene is taking itself a lot more seriously. A25, Neon, and even Bloomhouse to some degree are challenged in the perception of horror in non-horror fans. And in A24, A24's case, it's even managed to package some of these under alluring and prestiging of drama. Whether learning more towards art house or big budget studio horror, we're seeing more horror for everyone. Film critics who don't really like horror, award seasons, voters, or even your mom. While I don't like the term elevated horror, I don't think that you can look at something like Hereditary in 2018 or the upcoming Lamb and un understand how they're different from the final The Forever Purge or Spiral from the Book of Saul. And even those later entries offer for more social commentary upfront. A necessary way is then many of the studio horror films we saw in the 2000s, they all essentially essential to the survivor gene. But I think the appeal of something like Malignant for many horror fans, and from my perspective, Millennials, it is its reminiscence of the film that made us fall in love with the G in the first place. Loved by us, but not made for everyone. Films like House of Wax 2005, The Hills Have Eyes 2006, The Ruins 2008, Nasty Little Gems that even as remark or adaptations made us feel like discovering something new, despite being widely seen and encountered us to look further into the gene and make us discoveries. Malignant feels like a discovery from the error, something to be loved by us but not made for everyone. Well, that is my review. I appreciate it. Thank you so much and remember, be yourself. <laughs>